In this video, I'm gonna be walking you through the steps on how to make a home video look professional. Hey, thanks for joining me. I think it's important to understand what professional actually means. And it essentially means video that people want to watch. So video content that is engaging, but also it looks professional so that people go, oh, that looks good to me. I think I'll sit in and watch that. So if you wanna make really professional video, you're gonna to wanna to learn the five step formula that I have in this video. And by the time you get to the end, you'll have a very clear understanding of what it takes to make videos, make them look professional and get them watched by people. Right, so making professional looking video is not that obvious. I don't think it's really about standing up against a wall with a cell phone and hand holding that and, and talking into the phone. That's not really going to cut it. What you want to do is you want to make professional quality content that looks something like the content you're watching in this video. So I've got a five step formula that you're going to want to follow and it's an important five steps and you really don't want to miss any one of these steps. All right. Number one, you're going to need a camera. And I don't mean any old cell phone, any old camera you got lying around the house. I think you need a prosumer DSLR camera. It stands for digital single lens reflex. It's essentially a camera that can shoot a decent quality picture with a certain amount of pixels. And by pixels, I mean, you got to shoot at least in a minimum of what's called 1080p, or if you want to bump it up a little bit, shoot in 4K. And that gives you a fairly big size picture that you can zoom in and out of, and it's not going to look pixelated or grainy in any way. And that's really important because people have come to recognize what good quality video content is. Would they rather watch your homemade video on an old camera versus television? You have to think about that because people have a choice as to where they want to spend their time. All right, so let me make a couple of suggestions. The first one is what we call the Canon 90D, a DSLR camera that can suit your needs, or a Panasonic Lumix GH4, which is the camera that I'm using for this particular video. Both shoot in 1080p, both shoot in 4K, and both are in the $1,500 range. Now, that's including a lens, because you're going to want a good quality lens. I'm going to recommend a lens that is 18 millimeters, maybe 30 millimeters, up to 200, so a zoom lens. Why? Because sometimes you're gonna be further away from the camera, sometimes you're gonna be closer, and you're gonna need a zoom lens in order to capture the content professionally. All right, so a good camera, a good lens, we're off to a good start. Number two, lighting. If you wanna make any video look more professional, get some decent lighting, and frankly, that's not a huge investment. In fact, the lighting that I'm using for this specific video is one softbox. It sits on a stand, it's a few lights inside a box that has a white screen over top of the lights. And what does the white screen do? It diffuses the light, cuts down on the background, and just basically lights up your image without a lot of bright spots here and there. It basically softens the look and feel of the video. So a softbox at maybe $50 investment, maybe a little bit more off of Amazon or eBay, and you're good to go. Just make sure this softbox is pretty much right in front of you. In my case, it's just a little bit above the camera. All right, let's move on to number three, which I think is probably the most important one, because the number one rule of good video is great audio. You can have the best image on the planet. And if your audio is out of sync, it is low in quality, it has a hiss sound in the background, it has pops and noises and all kinds of other things. People have learned over time that audio is important to the way that they experience a video. And this is an innate thing that most people have because they're used to watching high quality television content. So audio is super important. So the most important thing about audio is that it's close mic What does close mic mean? Well, I'm gonna show you what not close mic means. I'm gonna use the audio momentarily 
from my Panasonic Loom HGH4. And you're gonna notice immediately the difference between the audio directly from the camera, and I'm a good six feet from that camera, and the audio from this microphone, which is a lavalier microphone attached to a transponder and a receiver on the other end. It's essentially a wireless lav microphone. It works because it's close mic. You wanna get the microphone close to you. So whether you're using a handheld microphone on a stand or you've got some type of apparatus to hold that microphone, you, you wanna make sure that it's very close to your voice, to where your mouth is, because if it's too far away, it just starts to get all that room sound, and we know what that sounds like, because I just played you an example of it. The other thing, too, is if you're not in a sound studio and you don't have your walls baffled and things like that, like a recording studio, then you might need in post what we call the editing process to maybe denoise the audio a little bit and that'll help it a lot. But remember, you wanna be close mic'd because the number one rule of video is great audio. All right, let's move on to number four. Let's talk about framing and background. So when you're doing an instructional video, which is probably most of the videos that you'll be making, you wanna make it look good. So you're gonna to need to frame yourself properly. So what does that mean? It means where your image is in relationship to the frame of the image that people are seeing. So a typical frame size is like 1920 by 1080. It's like widescreen. Where do you need to be? You need to be in the middle, just like I am, like dead center. You could be a little bit left or right, but as long as you're pretty much center of the video, that's okay. In terms of height, you want the top of your head not right at the top of the video, but down a little bit. So I'm gonna say maybe 20% down from the top of the frame. This way you can zoom in and zoom out using one camera. They're called zoom cuts. And that's what you do in post to make your video a little more interesting and also to cut out any filler words like um and ah and words like you know and the word and. <laughs> so people have all these filler words that they typically stick into a video and it's really hard to get rid of those unless you have a lot of practice. So zoom cuts can really help you tighten up the quality of the content and make it interesting. Now in terms of background, I would suggest that you do one of two things. In my particular case, I'm using a green screen and inserting a particular background that is appropriate for this video. For example, I'm making the video for the Songwriters Association of Canada, so I've got a jazz club in the background. If I'm making a video for business purposes, I might wanna have an office background. If I'm making a video for general audiences, I might wanna have a living room background. Now, it's a lot easier to do it that way than it is to film in front of a live background. But if you're gonna do a live background, I would suggest that you put yourself a good distance in front of the actual background. Don't put yourself right up against a wall because that gives you very little room to maneuver. But I would suggest maybe 20 feet in front of the background if you can. That way you can get a good depth of field, it looks natural, and you really look part of that environment. So whatever background you choose, just make sure that it is relevant to the content that you're making and that it looks good. And the final point that I wanna make now is number five, and I think it's probably one of the most important one. Yes, the four that came before this are great, but number five kind of summarizes the content of the actual video. So when in terms of content, there's the information that you wanna share, but the context is how you share that information. Context can also be well, they took what I said completely out of context. That means that if they're distracted or focused on other things and they're not focused on your content, your information is not hitting home. So I have basically one rule for this, and that is energy is everything. <laughs> Low energy, no viewers. High energy or appropriate energy can really attract listeners. They're gonna tune in, they're gonna wanna pay attention because your energy comes through in the video. So the rule is be twice as big as you think is appropriate. And this is not normal. I'm not speaking as if I'm having a conversation right now. This is not a normal voice. Yet when it comes through the video, it kind of sounds normal. And that's really important to understand. So you need to put out twice as much energy as you think is important because yes, energy is everything. 
So if you want to make your home videos look more professional, you're going to want to learn, understand, and practice every element of this five-part formula. I hope you enjoy it and have some fun with it. If you have any questions or comments about any of the content in this video, please write them in the comments below. It's been my pleasure working with you. Thanks for your time.